Hey everyone, welcome to week 59. This is day five. This is Friday. This is our last day of our Zorn plus Bismuth Yellow week. I think we've done really nicely. It's actually pretty tough to introduce a color, like a foreign color, to such a beautifully balanced palette like the Zorn palette. So, you know, there's a challenge to this week, but I think we've done really well. So next week, I'm not going to be able to uh, do the paintings because I'm going to be doing a virtual workshop, but don't worry. We'll see you guys in two weeks. So love you guys. Bye. Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is day five. This is Friday. This is our last day of our Zorn plus one week. And um, I think yesterday was a super fun day because I realized and you know, many times when I start these voiceovers, I have no idea where I'm headed. <laughs> I think you guys know this already, but, um, you know, I have some sort of sense of what I want to say, but I've always described these uh, voiceovers as just like diaries. And, you know, I'm just writing almost like stream of consciousness, just trying to figure out what it is that I'm trying to say and how I'm trying to make sense of things. I realized that... <laughs> At the beginning, I was sort of complaining, you know, with yesterday's painting about how my kids lost, you know, this beautiful sense of innocence that was manifested in the drawings that they would do from, you know, two years old to four years old. That was like the magical time and how I collected those drawings and I cherished those drawings. I still have like this huge portfolio chock full of these drawings and I love them. I actually adore having these drawings. But I think I started this conversation yesterday by thinking that I was going to be like, ah, I used to love how my children drew and how in a way I was disappointed that when I told uh, Fed to do something yellow, she did a banana. And I was thinking, oh, that's so obvious. You know, she's lost all sense of inventiveness. She has lost this wonderment in which she saw the world. I was even thinking like, oh, I'm sure that when she was four, she would have done something incredible. But now she's nine and I have to love her. You know, she's amazing. She's my kid. You know, but she she did a banana. You know, that's what she did, a banana. And I was like, yeah, I have to just learn how to live with that. And I have to be happy with that. You know, she's my kid. I'll love her regardless. But deep down, you know, I was dying inside a little bit, just reminiscing about, you know, these, this wonderful time of when they were doing these amazing drawings. And at the end of the video, I suddenly realize that what am I talking about? I am exactly the same way. I think of myself as this super educated artist, as this painter with a visual vocabulary that is far more dignified than the one that my children use. And, and maybe not, you know, maybe I'm exactly the same because, uh, like I said yesterday, I painted the things that I'm sure that if you type yellow in Google and you go for the images, you're going to get SpongeBob and you're going to get a DeWalt drill and you're going to get like yellow, you know, golden tokens and you're going to get a banana. You know, they're all the same. They're exactly the same thing. So maybe I'm not as sophisticated as I thought I was. I thought that was very cool. I thought that was very nice to just notice that um, yesterday. But anyways, it was super fun just reminiscing about how my children perceived the world and how almost like unattainable that manner in which they see the world is for me nowadays. I think yesterday I spoke about how we can teach ourselves how to hold on to that sense of amusement, to being super wide-eyed human beings that are, you know, genuinely surprised and excited even with the simplest of things. That is very childlike and I think we can teach ourselves how to do that at any stage of our lives. You know, it, it basically has to do with enjoying just the simplest things that the universe has to offer to us. Understanding the world as a child would understand it. I think that's impossible. We can relive those moments when we are with children, you know, and I think that I, I'm very grateful that life gave me the possibility to just relive something that I have slight memories of, which is my own childhood. But seeing what it means to be a child through my children is so incredible. And I actually got to do, you know, as an adult, and I have to be honest here, I'm speaking like a dad, and I'm sure there's many moms and dads like me out there. But as a dad, I started doing stuff for my children. I mean, at, at least that was the pretext. But I started doing stuff for my children that I enjoyed as a child. And even though it was stuff that was for my children, 
um, I would always be like, yeah, 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 no, it's for Samu. But secretly, it was all for me. I remember Samu when he was little, for example. Uh, he used to love dinosaurs and animals. So it would be amazing for me to go out and just buy these animals for him. There's these two brands out there that are the Schleich animals and the Papo animals. I think those are the two brands, if I remember them correctly. And I used to buy Samu all the dinosaurs I could and all the animals and they're these beautiful sculptures, you know, I'm, I'm an artist, so I always justify like action figures and comic book statues as like <laughs> sculptures. I'm always like, oh, this is amazing. Like this could be in a museum. If this was done by an artist in the 19th century, this would be at the Musée d'Orsay. But now it's a Hulk statue, <laughs> which by the way, now that I'm older and I think I can afford those sort of things, I started buying some of these statues and toys and all the stuff that... I always thought that my studio could be full of those things when I was younger because, again, I'm a comic book artist at heart. And um, I always thought when I was younger that I could have this studio that felt amazing, you know, that felt like this creative place, this cave that was just full of the things that I loved, you know. And, and I always told myself, I'm not ashamed to show people what I love, so I want to put comic books and paintings and posters of illustrations and I want to have all these statues of characters and monsters that I loved when I was a kid because that to me means like energy it means like this is the creative power that I want to surround myself with and we've been super lucky with Danny that purchasing artwork from you know artists that we admire has been a huge part of rekindling that wish that I always had to live among art to live among you know, stimuli that really, really pushes me to want to be better and that broadens my imagination and that just keeps me alive. And I feel like a kid. And honestly, I think that that's what I felt like when I was a kid, when I was just in my room, just drawing my monsters and creating all these imaginary worlds. So it took some time, I mean, decades, but I got to a place where I can be that person again. And I think it's awesome because from the outside, maybe someone goes like, oh, that's so immature, but not really. Ever since I left home, I've paid for everything. I've worked for everything that I have. I've painted for over 20 years. I've lived off of my painting for over 20 years. I taught at a university at a finer faculty for 12 years of my life. I've done workshops all over the world. I have two kids and I think I'm doing a really good job with them. You know, they're good, decent kids. So I'm very proud of that. And I'm at a point in my life that I want to be super happy and I want to surround myself with people that make me happy and with, you know, things that inspire me and that get my creative juices flowing. And, and that's the reason I'm with Danny. You know, life brought us together and we are an unusual couple, WandaVision. But uh, but life put us together and we're meant for each other. We're meant to be each other's company. We're meant to push each other. I think she's one of the most intelligent people I know. I think that she sees so many things. You know, I think of myself, again, like a super sophisticated painter. And there's so many things I miss that she sees in art all the time that I'm just amazed by it. She completes all the gaps that I, I create. And she's incredible. And I hope I can do that for her too, obviously. So... I don't know. Yesterday got me thinking about why it was so important or why I had the expectation of being surprised by Fed. And I thought she was going to do something that's completely out of the ordinary. And what happened was that she showed me that I am as ordinary as her, but that even though we are two ordinary people and, you know, Samu is probably the same and Danny is probably the same. We're just, you know, regular people. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't be in awe of everything that surrounds us. And that doesn't mean that fair drawing a banana, the simplest of things, cannot turn into a painting, into a really valid, beautiful painting, I think, because it made me reflect upon my own creative process. It was a moment that made me realize that maybe we don't have to have this very sophisticated visual vocabulary. Maybe, you know, painting is not really about those things. Maybe we really can be just people, just regular people. And maybe questions that arise from the acceptance of being completely regular people and we can speak about who we are, even though it's not going to be laughter and fireworks and perhaps people, when they look at what our lives are through our paintings, will not gasp in amazement. And maybe it doesn't matter. 
you know, maybe those things don't matter at all. Painting is just meant to reflect who we are and what we do, and that's it. And maybe there's a sense of value to that, to the acceptance of that, that can't be measured against anything else. Maybe that by itself is something that's extraordinary. Maybe that by itself is one of the most valuable things that we'll have in our lives. And perhaps that's why I'm painting Fed with these glasses on today, because I thought that after my instruction of drawing something yellow, you know, I would be able to be mesmerized by the perception that she has of this world. You know, I was like, whatever I'm lacking, I could be the most boring person and I was kind of fishing for something to paint. I was like, okay, Fer can actually take me out of this problem. And I'm going to ask Fer to solve something for me. I know it's going to be so cool that when I painted, people are going to go like, oh, that child is just a prodigy and she's amazing. Just this wonderfully creative child. And she was like, oh, yellow, a banana. Next. <laughs> And I realized that's more than enough. Why was I expecting that her perception of this world could be my catalyst? Why was I trying to steal her thunder? Why was I trying to feed off of some of her creative energy? I didn't need that. So I think these uh, tinted glasses that Fed is wearing today speak about that. It was just my thirst for wanting to see the world through her eyes because I thought there was more to this, you know? Because I thought that Maybe through her eyes, I'm going to see something that's fantastic. I'm going to see something that I miss, that I just can't see anymore. Maybe through a nine-year-old's you know, perception, um, I can see the world anew again. And that wasn't the case, you know? All she saw was a banana. And I had to learn how to be completely fine with that. And not only was I fine with that... I realized that I have way more things in common with her doing a banana and me thinking that I was doing something far more elevated by speaking about color theory and these sacred pieces of art and all the voiceovers that I've done that have accompanied these paintings this week. I mean, all of those have been sincere. I, I'd like to think that that's where my mind is at when I think about those paintings. But yesterday, it wasn't about being wide-eyed, but it was humbling and it was eye-opening, I would say. Because I'd like to believe that I'm a painter that can see wonderful things in just about anything. But I am also human and I also get disillusioned about my own creative process. And when I compare myself to others, which I should never do, when I look at Instagram and I follow so many amazing, amazing people, and I look at these incredible painters, and I go like, oh my God, I'm so far from them. I'm so far away from them. That you start being so mean to yourself and you start treating yourself in such an unfair manner. But that's not cool either. That's not healthy. Like I'm the first person to always tell somebody else like, oh, don't compare yourself. Just look at your own process. But you know, I sometimes falter and I and I fall into this trap of looking at other people's work and, and feeling worthless. And I think yesterday was just about saying, hey, you are only going to be able to paint what you are going to be able to paint. And you have to be okay with this. I, I know that people sometimes think that this sounds a bit like being content with what you have. And no, if anything, I'm always speaking about exploring and pushing and trying things out and not being afraid of failure and just putting to test the boundaries of our experience and our knowledge and our ability. I don't know if I'm trying to push just to expand because I think I've told you guys that I think the more I push, the happier I am to go back home, you know, the happier I am to say, wow, you know, these are great possibilities that I just encountered, but let me go home. I'm so happy when I'm at home. And I don't know, maybe that's what's stopping me from uncovering these extraordinary ways to understand painting. But I feel that we can only be the artist that we're meant to be. And I think I'm meant to relish the smallness of things. And even though we've worked crazy hard on this project, I think this is the hardest I've worked in my whole life. I'm ready for it. But, you know, I wish I could have done this when I was younger. <laughs> I probably had far more energy and I could live on like three hours of sleep. But nowadays, it's a little bit tough. Physically, it's a little bit tough. But I think mentally, I'm so willing to put in all this hard work because I think the payoff is just amazing. I've learned so much about myself 
And sure, I've learned so much about painting and how I understand painting. But I think more importantly, this journey has been about self-acknowledgement. And in the end, if I learn about myself, I can be better for the people that I love. I can be a better partner for Danny. I could be a better dad for Samu and Fer. I could be a better son for my mother. And hopefully I could be a better sibling to my uh, sisters and my brother. So I think that that's super important for me. I think that that's probably the most important thing about painting, that it helps me become that person. So I think this painting today, everything about this painting, the way Fed is isolated by, you know, wearing these cans, these uh, headphones, and the way I thought her perception would be shaped through these glasses. I thought that this yellowness that I asked her to solve was going to blow my mind. And I think she gave me an important lesson when she said, I don't have to blow your mind, Dad. Like, we're fine as we are. And you can paint the things that we are. You don't have to paint extraordinary things. You don't have to tell extraordinary tales. Our life is absolutely fine as it is. And maybe you can speak about us being completely fine and happy with who we are. And I thought that was really nice. That's going to be it for today. It was a nice lesson. I'm getting teary-eyed. And now that I'm almost crying... I'm going to say something that's sad, which is that because I've been working on a workshop, uh, we're not going to be able to post um, videos next week. We're so sorry. We may have had a chance to do this, but we would have had to work so hard. And I think we would have been just exhausted. So the paintings wouldn't have been good. And the voiceovers would have been like, ugh. I would have just said anything to just get them over with. And with the workshop that I'm doing, I would have probably just sucked. Because I just wouldn't have had the energy to do it. So it wouldn't have been fair to anyone. There's not going to be any videos. But don't worry. We're going to be working hard so we can be back in two weeks. Like we said on Fridays. Danny and I, super grateful for letting us be your company. So we hope that you give us a chance in two weeks to uh, be part of your lives for just a little bit. Thank you again. Love you guys. Bye.